Welcome. Sound activated. Microphone activated. Administrator status granted. Hey guys, welcome back to the Flat Lab. Hello everybody. Check. Sorry about the noise for the fan, but we have to have it on. It's super hot in here. Um, Mark's feeling better. I'm Mark, and this is my wife Trish, and we run the Flat Boys Company, where we create affordable CNC machines for the hobbyists. Um, we have a pretty cool show lined up for you guys tonight. Uh, we're glad to be back, for one thing. We've been just going nuts, man, as usual. Um, but let me get my notes. All right. Yeah, so Mark got a, I don't Sounds know. Sounds okay. Thanks, George. Sorry. I don't know. What would you call last week that you, what you had? He had a really, head cold. really bad head cold for a couple days there. I mean, it kicked his butt. Big yeah, time. It yes, it did. <laughs> anyway, it was lame, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, funny. but we're done with that. It's amazing how much snot your head can hold. It's true. That was Sweetie, the flat cat. Um, I just want to go over the notes real quick. Um, the flat news. The flat news, sorry, because we've been way behind. But I talked to Jovian on the flat form there, uh, uh, Nick, about the pocketing plugin for uh, Sketchicam. And he said it's going to be harder than it looks uh, up front. So he's still looking into it, but it's going to be difficult. So it's not going to be as quick as we thought. But we want to thank, thank him for trying, and um, very cool, man. He's also helping us out with this uh, uh, new project we've been working on, a uh, 3D printer. So it's going to be awesome, man. I have to touch base with him again. I've, it's been a while since I talked to him, but I've got updates uh, about that a little bit tonight. Um, I saw a couple guys on the on the uh, forum there. I think Jovian was one of them, and maybe Asking was posting about the... Uh, project PhotoFly from Autodesk Software, uh, and it's Randy. Randy stop it. It's really a cool little program where you take pictures of an object all the way around the object, and then it converts it into a 3D mesh. It's awesome. So if you get a chance to check that out, do a search on Google for uh, Project PhotoFly. It's pretty cool. Um, Want to say happy birthday to Silver Fox? Yep. Happy birthday, man. Local flat club member. Oh, yeah. Photo fly. Yeah, it is. Um, let's see. I want to show you guys something real quick. If, I, if it'll let me switch over and keep talking. Um, give me one second. couple guys on the flat forum that are really standing out as far as um, taking their flat printers and creating a business selling kits. Uh, just ran across a couple sites. I've, I've known about the sites, and, but uh, I haven't been on there in a while and I wanted to check out some of the new stuff they have. And so I'm going to go over to one of them. Uh, if we left your site out, we are very sorry. Please send us an email and we'll be happy to promote you on next week's show. We're always happy to promote any Flat Club member and in, in your endeavors. We appreciate your support, and we'd like to return the favor. Right, and don't forget, guys, we always say, you know, if you're a Flat Club member, you get a, a free banner ad that goes into the random rotation of the, of the flat form. So just create one and send it to us. I, I just wanted to put these up real quick. Uh, bad to the foam is uh, any ARC, I believe. I believe. And he's got some awesome kits here man if you get a chance check them out band of the phone dot com and uh, the space shuttle really looks awesome to me but what's cool is that he includes the the, the, um, the flat code with it as well so you could just if, if you buy the plans you get the code so it's really cool man the way he's got it set up and you get a PDF with you know the build instructions and everything very cool um, I'm not sure how well this is coming in, but 
I also wanted to show you uh, 3D mod designs. That's uh, 3D mod on the flat on the flat form. It's Sean. He's got some cool airplanes on his site, man. And one of the cool things I noticed is that the Yak 54 kit um, is available painted or unpainted now. So that's awesome, man. Good job, Sean. Really good job. And if, if you go to the if you click on his uh, this page you can go through it you can basically pick pick the unpainted kit you can download the instructions um, he's got videos for each one it's really really well laid out he's really making it a good go at it and uh, just appreciate him putting this up it's awesome man so if you guys get a chance check out 3dmondesigns.com and support Sean with his kits They're very very cool um, while we're on to the websites, uh, let me, uh, let's see. Oh, it won't let me. You can always go ahead and check out the CrashCast at CrashCast.com yep. as well as AllThingsCrash.com. Let's not forget MakingFoamFly.com. That would be Jovian's website. Yep. Um, uh, Shine. ShineDRC.com. ShineDRC. S H I N E D R C.com. It's a must see. Um, one thing I wanted, just real quick, to put up here if I could. Uh, let's see if I'm looking again. Is 7 Up uh, put out the. I don't even, I'm not sure how you say it, but I'm going to say the, the Pygit, the Pygit, I guess, 3D. If you guys get a chance, uh, the plate, it's awesome, man. It's a really cool looking plate, and the, he's got the code and everything. There's a micro version now. Um, let me see, I don't know. Yeah, he's got the micro version with a 16 and a half inch wingspan. And just, if you get a chance, check it out. It's under... Um, it's on the platform under aircraft single wing aircraft designs or plans and the guys are cutting them out and they just look awesome and from what I gather they're flying really well so that's a good picture right there check it out now that's over propped I would say <laughs> but it's still super cool torque rolls uh, and it looks like um, it looks like Ewu's working on one. Bruce has got a micro version he's working on, which is cool. And we know he does good design. So I just want to thank Seven Up for putting that up there. It's just a really cool design, man. RC Flyboy said he believes it's pronounced Pi J. Pi J. Pi J. And it flies great. And Stellar said it flies great. Cool. So we don't want to forget ExtremeFoamies.com. Greedy Mom put that in the chat. Okay. We also have GHVoid.com. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, I just checked on these just for a second. Um, I just wanted to see what was new out there. And this was actually last week I checked on, on the sites. And just cruising around and I saw that the Yak was painted or unpainted. And I thought that was super cool, Sean. So good luck with that, man. I um, wanted to make a quick note of the contest rules for the earthquake contest. Uh, for the flat shaker, um, they will be up tonight on the platform, we as, we as well as the code um, for the building and the weight, what you guys were asking for. If there's anything else, you know, you can just post in there. Uh, we have the, the rules all typed up. We just want to give it one last look over before we post it. We just want to be rather safe than sorry on that one. Yep. Just want to make sure. Yep. Um, yeah. Um, Thunderhawk on the platform, he carries some of our uh, micro kits for the, uh, the Flat Boys micro kits. Uh, and he just posted that he has them in stock. So awesome, man. Um, let's see. I also wanted to do a quick uh, shout out to Urum Tiger Pilot on the platform for the brushless motor mod, motor spindle mod. That is so cool. He took an RC motor, uh, brushless motor, speed controller, and uh, servo controller, I believe. and Created a an attachment for the flat printer. Oops, sorry, Brandy. The flat printer three to put 
the, uh, the RC motor on here. It's just really cool. You got to check it out, the brushless motor on there. He says it's loud, but I need to get more details on how he did the, the cut, the spindle here with the double bearings. But anyway, very cool, uh, Urim. Just, Great job. Yes, that is very cool. Um, also, shout out to Flash Solutions and also to Jovian for their iPad holders. It looks like uh, Flash Solutions has a second generation iPad holder out there. And uh, both of those hold the Galaxy tablet as well. So, uh, so grab them. They're awesome, man. If you get a They're chance. They're really, really nice. Yeah, They're perfect. They really are. Um, quick specs on the 3D printer, unless you have something. No, no, interject there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so guys, you know we've been working on the uh, fuse deposited uh, modeling 3D printer, which is basically extrudes hot plastic through a nozzle like a glue gun and does it layer by layer and builds up the models. There's lots of them out there. We've been studying these machines for a while now and really just trying to come up with what, what we would think would be the, the best machine, you know. For all of us. For us, like what we're into and just taken in account what we've learned as well as we've as we've gone through this with our other machine designs and um, I think I'm on to something with it so I, I've gone through everything you can think of um, we've even okay. we've done the tread one uh, that moves back and forth on tank treads um, we had one that was a scissor lift that came up and down but the one we have now what we've decided to do is we've decided to not just make it a 3D printer, we want it to be a milling machine as well. Like a little desktop factory because if you're gonna, if we can hopefully, you know, be able to actually build a project on one using the plastic parts, why not be able to use it as a, a PCB circuit board milling machine as well with a little spindle and basically you can mill out your own circuit board designs too, which would be cool. For the or same, other things too. or whatever, yeah, 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 and a pen attachment. The concept is sort of like this, except on a smaller scale, to where you can pull the faceplate off and add a new attachment of your choice to it. Um, whether it be an extrusion hot end for a 3D printer or a spindle, um, or a router, router spindle, yeah, or uh, a pen attachment, whatever else we can think of. So. It's kind of cool that it, it, it's all along the same lines as the as the flat printer three, um, but it's a 3D printer as well. So uh, I wanted to just give you the specs. That, this is what my goals. These are my hopes. Now we're trying to keep it affordable, but I'm trying to make it 12 by 12 by 16. So you got 12 12 wide, 12 uh, 12 inches um, Sorry. square basically, and then uh, or not square, and then 16 inches high. So it should be, that size is huge. I mean, we can pretty much print anything, I would think, with that, with that kind of size. Um, some of the things that we've really focused on are the interchangeable attachments. Um, a lot of the designs that we see are kind of in a box, and you can't really get to, you can get to them, but not really get to the designs or see them happening, or I mean the, the uh, creations, the models. the models as they're being created. So I wanted to make sure that we didn't compromise the strength uh, but we still had an open design. Uh, we wanted it to be strong. Um, uh, we wanted it to be able to, you know, print large objects. And the main thing, one of the main focuses was uh, that the material did not move. On our 3D printer, we want the, um, a lot of them, the whole object moves. And I don't like that idea. When you start getting taller, I think that's going to, it could. Um, bring in some problems. So, on our design, the uh, the only direction the material moves is down uh, as it's being built. So, therefore, the extrusion head is the only thing that actually moves. And um, the closest design to what we have is called the Ultimaker. Um, it's a really cool design. It's well thought out. Um, the only thing I didn't like about that des particular design was they only used five millimeter rods for the extrusion head where the bearings ride, and that's very flimsy. Five millimeters, it's less than a quarter inch, so uh, it was no good. So we we wanted to beef that up. Um, I started working sort of with their design because they're going to keep it open source, but I didn't like all the belts and pulleys, and um, so I got away from that and went more towards a 
trying to come up with a rock solid gantry system. I don't have, I have a, a couple things in the works, but I don't have anything really to show you except one picture where I brought the machine into SketchUp and, and added the shadows, put it on a desk to see what it would look like in comparison to uh, a human standing at a average height standing uh, next to the desk. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to do that is if it was milling something, of course, the uh, platform would be up high and the mill head would be here and I wanted to make sure that it wasn't up here and you couldn't see it. I wanted it to be at a good height so you can actually watch the bit as it's working. So I have a, a quick picture, just a SketchUp picture um, that I can show you. It's not, even the it's not even a model, it's just a picture, but I'm going to go over to that. And that's basically the setup that we're looking for or after. It's a, this is a very basic right now. overview. Yeah. But you can see the platform, uh, of course, uh, it's in the center there and it drops down. We've alleviated any kind of bars in front of you. So you can reach in there and uh, work with work with the tools. Um, it uses linear, linear guides, so it's belt driven, super fast. Of course, I, I believe we're going to run into issues where the quickness is going to be determined by how fast you can extrude the material. So anyway, it's super cool. I've got some portions of it built, but nothing that I'm uh, willing to share right now because it's horrible at this point. I don't. I'm not real happy with it. So uh, that will be a later date. One other thing is on the last flat lab, we were working on new rollers for the uh, for the flat printer three, uh, more beefier, not rollers, but um like a DIY roller system with beefier belt system and everything. And uh, I just wanted to show you some circles because the guys were having some problems with circles on the, uh, on the platform there. Some of the guys were. And I just wanted to show you some of the circles that um, Evil Tunes, Glenn on the platform there, has brought over to show us his machine has been cutting. And they're perfect and you know these were tests that he ran for us and I really appreciate him working with us on this um, the 100 inches a minute CNC USB 100 inches a minute mock uh, mock plus CNC USB 200 inches a minute where he alternated back and forth on those and they really they just came out really well and there's a couple things that he's doing different that we've been experimenting with on our machine so um, hopefully once we get all that uh, tweaked and figured out we'll be able to pass that on and a lot of it just has to do with the settings which is cool we've made some changes in our settings so far. yeah so that's the path we're on right now yeah so, so we're, we're on top of it we're working on it and uh, we'll let you know as soon as we do yep so um, thank you Glenn for doing that man yeah uh, awesome he uh, didn't just test it he then drove to our house and dropped that off he which did was really cool um, so yeah that was very cool that's a good friend for you. <laughs> and by the way, I gotta go see you, man. My hair is getting pretty long. Uh, so what's next? Well, we can announce the original flat printer is back. The original flat printer is back, you guys. Finally, um, I have a box full of parts over here. Uh, what I was gonna do tonight is we have to do test fits, you know, to make sure everything's gonna work. Uh, this, but you know, we we haven't cut out the original flat printer for our, you know, in house. So we went through and modified some of the code to get it to where it'll fit a little better and things like that. And uh, it's just going to be great, especially for the kids in, that are getting into RC. Uh, it's going to be super inexpensive. You can buy this, and you can just get parts from wherever you can get them to make this machine work. And all of us here, almost all of us here, have built the original flat printer. So be exact we have uh, 92 original flat printers out there yeah so I mean most of us guys have built it and we can it's just going to be cool to be able to help the other guys that are just getting into it um, we're, we're going with the DIY kit only which you it's, know, it's identical been, to the original yeah, it is if you've been around since the beginning that would be what we used to call our bones kit with a slight modification we decided to go ahead and include the pulleys and belts because out, other than the hardware store parts that you will need to complete this kit the pulleys and belts were, were something that had to be bought off of the internet and then also the electronics so we at least right. took that one 
off of the list and we'll just so it'll be all the cabinet parts pulleys and belts ship to your door and a list of where you can get the rest of the stuff or you can just go dumpster diving like we do it all the time to get parts <laughs> so i mean it's the, sh the it's shopping a, list is based on a hardware store though <laughs> yeah but i mean you can you can we have tons of machine shops and stuff around here they throw away the coolest stuff man I mean, sometimes they go out there and they got full-blown machines sitting out there, and I just go up there with a wrench and go, hey, you guys, mind if I get any of these parts? And they're like, oh, go ahead, it's just scrap. And I'm like, man, I find some cool stuff like that. Yeah, you do. But the original flat printer really is based, is, is built with using very simple hardware. Yeah, hardware. That, that one was, exactly, it's based on I mean, all thread, and that, to, pretty much everything is at Lowe's. Yeah, you, you know? that's, what, that's where that we That was the whole the concept parts. behind yep. it, so. With the exception of the motors and the electronics, um, and that and that will give you on the shopping list. Yep, so it's very cool, man. I think this is going to open the door again to a lot of guys just getting into it and, and make it affordable, you know. Um, so what I was going to do tonight was, it's been so long since I built one, I thought, I need to do a dry fit anyway. I'm going to see if I can do a dry fit from memory and, uh, <laughs> and just see how long it takes me, you know, because I, I think there's 36 parts. So RC Flyboy, NJ, I don't know if you're on or not, but, uh, and anybody watching, if you remember, RC Flyboy, NJ won a contest on the Flat Lab show, and yep. the prize was... Our next machine, you get one. Awesome, so, man. RC Flyboy NJ, you get the first uh, original flat printer that we create here in house shipped to you. And, uh, and, and we would appreciate any feedback, you know, as right. you build it. So, thank you very much and yeah. congratulations, man, Nate. Absolutely. Um, but before we get into that, uh, before we get into dry fitting the, um, the original flat printer, I wanted to get back into the earthquake shaker. Speaking of earthquakes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you weren't on the platform the other day or haven't watched the news, we had an earthquake here, right here in New Jersey. Crazy. It was. But it was even really strange for us that day. I was talking to a friend of mine and I said, it was like 10 o'clock that morning and I said, I feel like something bad's going to happen, actually is what I said. I said, I just feel like something really big's going to happen today and I feel like we should be home with our families. Premonition. Yep. And a couple hours later, we had an earthquake. I mean, we don't have earthquakes here. It was so no. weird. And it was weird, man. It was the strangest sensation. And I, and I talked to Blind Flight Al, and he was all laughing at me because it's like normal where he's at in Southern California. <laughs> but I, it was it was definitely weird, dude. It's something that you depended on for so many years to be solid under your feet is just rocking like you're on a boat all of a sudden. It was weird. Yeah. I was in a building, and the whole building was going I'm like I'm psychologically this. damaged after that. It yeah, was, it, this is the best way to describe it. It was going like this. And I was right by a window, and you thought the window was just going to go, because the building was just moving around it. It didn't, but it really seemed like it was going to. Yeah, it makes you it makes you think about the end of the world and all this stuff. And uh, you know, I thought back on it, and I was like, you know what? I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. I was working with my dad. We were putting a window in. It was cool. <laughs> I went up. I was at work. Well, and uh, <laughs> other than that. And I wasn't sure if we were having an earthquake or if a tractor trailer was running into the building. Because we, there's a busy street out front. And I thought, oh my gosh. I think that the other office is getting plowed down by a tractor trailer right now. It's horrible. It was horrible. Can you plug that in for me? Mm -hmm. Thank you. You know what we ran into, guys, was... Uh, I have to unplug the fan. Like, well, you can why don't you do that second one? Second That's one? a drill charger. What we ran into um, with this earthquake shaker on the last sh time we tried it was, see how the table's moving? Oops. See how that table's moving? Well, it was dampening the entire system. So, I don't know how we're going to do this, but we're going to have to put it on the floor or something. Um, let's you think? see, let's see, hold on. We can carry, carry in the TV stand. That's a good idea. Let's do that. Does it have wheels? No. 
Is it? I think it does. Hold on, we're gonna we're gonna get this other stand that we got from Aunt Helen's the other night. Give us one minute, guys. Tilt it on its side so it's what not. What if we use that little table? No, that, I don't think that'll work. But Why? if we tilt this on its side, it might do it, babe. That's pretty sturdy. Tilt it on its side? Yeah. Uh, There's nothing in it. Let's try it. Yes, yes. Right? Yes. I don't really like that idea, but okay. At least that's more sturdy, right? Yes. <laughs> now it's going to slide <laughs> like crazy. There's nothing I can do about that. Excuse me. <sighs> that really ain't going to hurt anything, baby. There. It's lightweight. Uh huh. Somehow, if I had some rubber feet. I have foam feet. That what, ru uh, foam rubber? Like adhesive. All right, so sorry, I didn't mean to walk out. So you guys know we have a building, or you might not know, but we do. We have a building for it. So here's what we're thinking with the contest. Uh, this building has a hollow. Well, it's not hollow, but it has, a, it has a lip on the bottom. And this is where I'm thinking we'll put um, the designs that you guys give us. will have to fit within this criteria. Now, this is all I have. I have the things. Just one? Where would I have these things? Oh, uh, they're not sticky back? Mm -hmm. What is that? You're supposed to like, push it in or something? I wonder if that would make it even more uh, slippery. Maybe we can sit it under the corner. Sure. Hold on, I'm pushing them in. Let me get them lined up. Though. Oh, I work well. Yeah, they got like a little razor blade on it. Line plates saying put weight on the bottom. Put weight in the bottom? <laughs> Thunderhawk said our earthquake machine really works. <laughs> <laughs> it works too well. Oh, that's even worse. Look at the bottom moving. What we need is some of that red rubber stripping or something so I can't. Eventually, I think what I'm going to end up doing with this is screwing it to the table, you know? Not this table. Not that table. A table. Here you go. Get these off. It's actually worse. But I can hold it for now. Those are cool, man. You just press them in. Yep. Yeah, this will work. And I, the other thing is, I don't know if it's going to be fair to build up, you know thing like this, even though that is sort of what it was like, isn't it? Now that we've experienced this. <laughs> it's that. true. Yeah, it was. Except I would say it had a little bit of this motion. What I'll do is I'll put some L brackets, L brackets, and that'll... Yeah, maybe when you bring that workbench home. What workbench? I mean, Good idea. Okay, so anyway, we built this building. And what we'll do is we'll mount your structure 
actually I think I might just redo this building and put a top because you notice this top here is smooth uh, is flush I mean and then that way you guys can just you know go flush right to this and we'll build them and then we'll put them on here and they'll be flush because this lip kind of introduces some problems with the next edition I'm gonna put this up here. which is um, Evil Tunes had an idea. It was a cool idea. It's like, because when we put it on there, we were testing it the first time. It was moving like this, but it really wasn't doing anything. And we needed a way to kind of, you know, test on high, medium, low, like the Richter scale, 1, 5, 10. Something needs to fall off of here. And we need to be able to time each one. Uh, let's say we hold it on... Uh, one for 10 seconds then we go to two for 10 seconds and then three we uh, we count it until on three we keep it on there on high I mean until um, until it falls off and then we count that time whoever's lasts the longest wins that's basically how it's going to work Chuck's recommending a bowl of water on top and the object will be to spill the least amount of water that's a good idea but I got this King Kong. <laughs> it's the flat Kong. <laughs> so I found this guy on the internet and um, I put him, he was just a black and white line drawing and of course I put the flat boys on there. But he had his thumb up and I was like that's perfect dude. And it's, it's King like Kong. Him. Just like Andy the Aviator. So I put him through this uh, that program Vector Magic, and it basically um, you know changed all the lines into vectors, so I could create a DXF file, which then I brought into SketchUp, cleaned it up, and exported it into ArtCam, created a pocket file for the pen, and drew the pen, and then finally did the the cutout. So it's pretty cool. And I'm glad it fits up there. I've curved the bottom a little bit. I just bowed it like this, you know. And I thought, you know, eventually he's going to fall off of there as it's rocking. I would hope, anyway. So I thought this would be a good one, you know. But I do like the idea of the bowl of water idea, don't you? Yeah, it's good too. Might, might be a little bit hard to measure. Could yeah, get in there. That's true. Could get a little technical. Mm -hmm. Let's um, let's try this out. Let's see what happens. Where we go? Um, I gotta get down there so I can see it. Here we go. It's that's just what it was like. It was rocking. I even thought maybe we could put something under there, like a curved piece. Okay, so that would be um, on low. This would be medium. What the? So that's how it would be. But we would have to actually, uh, of course, the building would be mounted to your, whatever your platform is, your gimbal. So it wouldn't vibrate around like that. But it works pretty good, man. Yep. That's the first time we tried it, so I'm gonna see if I can do that again. We'll work it up to medium. How about that? What happens if we tape this down? It's just transferred to him, isn't it? How about on this side, man? Right. See when you, like, you already moving that quick. The problem is if you go too fast, it wants to do that.
Well, you know, that acts just like those little football players that vibrate the table and the football player moves along. Yeah. But the vibrations are being transferred, so... Look at that. So actually, if you if you had something that, that was able to lessen that, still... I think we're going to have to pick a speed and just leave it on that speed. Let's see. Okay. Stop, watch it. Let's stop, watch it, and see who's lasting longest. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because it gets going so fast that it can't help itself, it loses it. I know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. I still have I still haven't added any uh any weights. Any weights to it yet. It's actually doing pretty good. If you can get it. Just keep bumping it up a little bit at a time. See if I go any quicker, then I start. I think if I have more weight, so because you know, with no dampening system, this should actually knock him right off. I would think, you know. So we could always cut his base shorter too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We could cut this off a little bit more, which would make him fall over easier, though. Let me try curl this up some more. I should have made this round. That would have been better. So the idea is two weeks. That's, that's the time frame. So not next week's show, but the week after will be a contest edition with the prize being the CNC USB MK2 board. Whoa! Oh, oh man, right, <laughs> right in front of the camera. Sorry. Thank you, Andre, from PlanetCNC.com for donating this awesome prize for our contest. Yes, thanks, it's, man. I, I will say that this contest is probably the longest contest we've ever had. Well, it's just been the longest to get started. Longest to get started contest we've ever had. Oh, oh. Let's get a time on so it. So what we would have to do is, we, how are we going to place this every time? Yeah, you want to time it? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'm counting in my head. Ready, on your mark, get set, yeah. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, ten Mississippi, eleven Mississippi, twelve Mississippi, thirteen Mississippi, fourteen Mississippi, fifteen Mississippi. That's it. I hope it's more scientific than that for the real contest because it's, it's hard to say Mississippi after you say it <laughs> a bunch of times. So 15 seconds, that's the world record right now. The flat quake. I think we might have to do some kind of bowl of water thing, but I do like the gorilla. I don't know why we'd have to do a bowl of water. I think that's to get really complicated with judging. I mean, okay, you have a couple of uh, measuring cups. Spills. It's just, I mean, what if it falls off? And then how are you gonna how are you gonna measure it? You weigh it. Oh, you weigh it, huh? We could do a tear on the um, on the bowl, you know. Put in the exact amount, eight fluid ounces. 
see, here's the other thing. Well, that doesn't matter. I was going to put an airplane in his hand. <laughs> but, but what I'm thinking is, of course, he's front heavy, so... I don't know. We still have to think about this. Let's put something heavy up there and just see what happens. Something heavier. Tape. Like I know we did before. But let's see if it affects the uh, quake. It does affect the quake. It's because the spring's going down. I really don't have enough weight on there. So that means that the different platforms are going to have different weights and that would affect it too. No. I don't, they're going to be foam, so they're going to be so, low, so light in it. But see, if what I was thinking is if we put a bowl of water up there, you get a different effect, you know? And when we did it, when you don't have anything on there, it goes side to side. God bless you. Thank you. That's sort of like what it was really like. It was like this. It wasn't round. You know, it didn't move you around. It just went back and forth. Just like that. That's what the ground felt like right there. So anyway, and I'll put him up there too, so you guys, if you want to do it, it takes a, a little while to color him in. All the normal rules, one sheet of fan fold, foam, eighth inch, stock fit, um, glue only, build instructions if needed, please. Tab and slot construction, always appreciate it. Oh, yeah. What happened to those things? It's all foam. Yes, I They're on the dining room table. So I was messing around with some column designs and I realized I can't enter this contest because I have the machine here, you know. But anyway, this might give you some ideas. Uh, this is sort of like an anti-backlash uh, gear system thing that doesn't actually work, but it gives you an idea that I thought, you know, something along these lines might make for a good, oop, good column. I broke one of the legs, I think. Um, Classic Coast says if you have a droid phone, which we don't, he has an app that measures vibration and graphs it with, graphs it with peak values. I do have a droid phone. That's a good idea. You don't. And here's one out of uh, MDF, which doesn't move at all. <laughs> you can't move that one. I mean, I don't have the phone. I have a, I have a Galaxy tablet, which is a droid. Right operating system and it might be the right weight I don't know I've never tried it what's the name of the app well I'm just saying how would it work you gotta put it up there before it no no I don't know I have to have to download the app and everything but you probably put it on there and it, it measures it's like a force sensor measuring accelerometers you know But anyway, that's the plan. There's still some details to work out on my end with the machine itself, but we will work them out. Yep, there's enough, enough details here to get you going on the contest. I know one thing. With the exception of the official rules being posted, which will be posted tonight, yep. along with the file. Along with the file, which, like I said, guys, we're just we're going to go with the smooth surface on top. Um, because this lip is going to create problems, so this will be our, this will be our, this will actually be our bottom, and I'll just I'll make a new building with it. With, or actually, I'll just cut this off, so I can have the smooth surface up there to, to have the monkey on there. All right, cool. Okay, so it's a gorilla. A gorilla. <laughs> the silver back. Okay, so let me. Uh, Move this out of the way. Okay. I can't wait to try this build. <laughs> Any guesses on how long? Ooh, how long? How long it'll take? I'm going to guess 12 minutes. Like. 
It's on wheels. I'm guessing I can't build on that. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> Trisha's overly protected with the furniture. <laughs> Here, you want to bring it out here? That's all right. I'll just move it out of the way for now. Now, we're ho I hope I have all the parts here that we need. Um, just making sure I put them all in a box. So what I'd like to do before you start the timer is... Mm -hmm. Can I separate everything? Sure. In the different... Uh, yeah, why not? Here, you want to use the ottoman? That's a good idea. And I'll use this chair. Okay, so we got some places to set some things. I'll put some longer parts here. All right, so now we're working on dry fitting the original flat printer. I want to make sure that they all the parts go together like they're expected, and also show you how easy it is. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> we hope we can show you that. Has been a long time. I do remember the lid. I know my gantry parts. I, I know the gantry parts. Yeah. Yeah. I put any parts that are the same together. Yeah, now we have the, the numbers on here. Of course, here. the build live video will help you too. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to try to guess it, but. So, so that's gotta be. together? Sure. I'm just kidding. I don't know. No, because then you'll blame me. You don't get it done in time. Quick enough. I don't mind helping. No, I'm just going to go for it. I really want to. I really want to see. Alright. Wait, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> Still gone through some of the parts. Parts Just laying them out, that's all. <laughs> it's still going to be super hard. Okay, I'm ready. And go. 848, but it's pushing 849, so we'll go ahead and say 840. Ah, we'll say 848. 12 minutes was my estimate, so that would be an even 9 o'clock. Okay, don't rush me. I'm not rushing you. Part. No, that's not the right part. Trish, you can't. Oh, that is the right part. You can't sit there and do that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh my gosh. You got it. It's gonna be one of those nights. <laughs> Uh, 
messed up because that can't go on there like that. Unless I can squeeze that in there. uses a Dremel for its cutting tool and cuts from underneath. It also has one single drive roller which is different than the flat printer 3 and it cuts a width of 22 inches. It accepts foam up to 24 inches. That's also another difference between the flat printer 3 and the, which cuts 27 inches to allow for a full sheet of Depron. The original flat printer was a project that uh, we worked on years ago and used it in our garage for you know years. We developed the Flat Fleet which is a group of airplanes that all have similar cartoon like uh, squished up design features and basically Mark just got sick of hand cutting it out over and over and over again trying when he was tweaking the designs he couldn't stand it anymore so he came up with a flat printer using hardware store parts, really inexpensive. And, and finally one day I said, you know, you should really post that. I bet you the other guys would like it too. And our lives haven't been the same since. Mm -hmm. And it was three years ago on Monday that we took orders for the first time for, for the, this original flat printer. And everybody really liked it. It was great. It was a group project, which we fully expected to be again. That's one of the reasons why we kept it as a DIY kit is because that was half the fun of finding, you know, okay, we recommend, well, we don't necessarily recommend, but we say that these parts will work, and you say, well, this part will work better, or this is what I did, and then everybody gets to compare their notes and, you know, dial the, their machines in, get it cutting faster and better, and it was great. Yeah, that, that was really cool. And that's what's cool, there's an extensive database on there and and the guys knowledge themselves of just all the different modifications that have been done it's just awesome man a lot of guys have converted it to belt drive I think I just messed up you guys are trying to talk to me so I can so I'll mess <laughs> up here. It's, it's not going to be belt driven it's going to be just like the original flat printer was the only things that I've really have done is I, I went back and and added um, but I, I did different uh, I added these offsets here so that it'll fit a little easier when it goes together I just really tweaked the design as far as fitting tight and snug but also flush no more filing of the edges each part has the, the thing in there yep. hold on I can't tell I mean there's lots of improvements that we you know could have made to make it cut faster or, or whatever but you know our time is so limited as it is and we really wanted the, the important thing is to keep the cost down so anybody that wants to, to get into their first CNC machine kit can afford to do so and um, we've definitely been able to do that and we're excited about it we think it's going to open the doors for a lot of people especially younger people that are in the hobby you know now they can they can ask for this for their birthday or for Christmas and it's actually you know really achievable for the for the parents to, to help make that happen and then they can ask for gift certificates to Lowe's and they can get their Dremel and their screws and nuts and everything else that they'll need and just pick away at the kit um, until they have all the parts so that's always been a was always a really nice feature of the flat printer it was affordable really 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 affordable and uh, this is no exception okay may I so here we have the flat printer lid. You might recognize the logo. Those of you who have the flat printer, original flat printer, or uh, have seen it before. But this is only the second time that we've cut one out on our machine. The first one, the parts weren't going together like we would have liked, so we are back to the drawing board. I think we have it now. talking to me? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we think we have it now. And the good part about it being a DIY kit, another good point is it's light to ship internationally. So that'll keep the international shipping prices down. And we'll be able to have them in stock. So that's really important. 
it's important for us to have all of our machines in stock. We strive for that all the time. But these, uh, when we get into the DIY kits, it's a lot easier. You don't have to wait for shipments. You don't have to juggle a lot of parts and try to have them all in stock and make sure you realize what you don't have. And you know, it's a oh, lot to handle. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Okay, they need to move this. Trish, what are you doing? Sorry, I know where it goes. No, don't do it. You're not allowed. It's totally cheating. All I need is this part. I don't know where it goes anyway. Believe. Believe. Nope, flip it. Hold on, let me think, please. Okay, so that one doesn't go there, right? It has to. That's the side that that goes on. <laughs> RC Flyboy NJ said uh, that's true my Christmas was foam hot glue and box knives sweet yep good night broomstick and TH good night guys Thunderhawk yep Mark got foam for Christmas too oh yeah my sister's kids she asked what they want to get Uncle Mark for Christmas and they said foam like as if there's anything else to get Uncle Mark for Christmas That's it. That's it. For what? The world record? <laughs> Gosh, a minute and a half. I don't think I can do it. You can do it. Why? What's a minute and a half anyway? I said I'd I have to wait 12 minutes. Really? together really well. Oh, I'm missing something. I missed the part. Nope. This one belongs like that. Oh. Get this in there now. 
see, it normally wouldn't be like this. Dude, remember this? someone else cutting them out for us uh, a rubber mallet was needed in fact that's why we have a rubber mallet it was a recommendation from crash watching us build say at the very end. No, I just wasn't going to interrupt you. Oh. Thanks, baby. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I'm missing something here. Oh, I messed up. Hold on. Forgot to put these on. The fillers. These just sit here, but I'm gonna set them in there anyway. Maybe put a piece of tape on it. minutes because I was we were way into that first one nice. so 15 minutes of course that doesn't include putting all the screws and everything gluing it together but still I mean it, it goes together pretty quick I didn't I didn't yeah, glued, I see so that. <laughs> you can tape them together that's all right so we can lift it up all Of course, this is the gantry that goes inside. And this is this would be your lid, with the hinges on it. And it has pressure roller. Drive roller. Your bit comes up through here, which is connected to this, of course. It's just a really easy to build 
inexpensive CNC machine that will cut out your foamy airplanes. Uh, the only thing I didn't put on here is there's a plexiglass windshield that fits in here, which I didn't cut out yet. So, and, you know, to be honest, plexiglass is expensive, when we could eliminate that, and it would uh, save on cost, you know? It's true. Cool, man. It's good to have him back. Well, that's pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions, um... Feel free to email us at flatboys at flatboys.com. Right. Uh, sorry. I'm we'll go ahead. Three went somewhere else. We're going to be working on the uh, on the, uh, the earthquake file. contest, and uh, I'm going to upload the building files and everything. Even though that building file has a lip, don't go by that. Just go by the outside edge. You know, this is going to be your maximum area, this perimeter of this outside edge. Um, so. You can go smaller than that, but don't go any bigger than that, because they all got to be the same or uh, That's right. limited. You know? Yep. So very cool, guys. Hope you enjoyed the show. Have a great night. God bless, and we'll talk to you guys soon. See you on the platform. Thanks for hanging out, guys. It's Thanks always for fun. Yes, it is. <laughs>